What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we've got kind of a fun one for you. We're gonna learn to build the classic game Pong, the game that pretty much started modern video games. We're gonna learn to recreate that in Python using Pygame. Up and down controls um, all set. So uh, next thing I wanna do is get the uh, computer to track the ball and then I want to get the ball moving. Uh, so let's see for that. Um, I think we should make the computer's location uh, the next thing that we update. So <clears throat> we're going to have to create a new function and call it. Um, I'll call it update AI because that sounds hardcore. But for this, we are going to be passing in the ball's Y coordinate and the computer's current Y coordinate and then we're going to get the computer's Y coordinate back. So based on where the ball is, the computer's going to update um, where it is accordingly. So let's go ahead and create that function. And we called it update AI. Great name. I always use AI instead of computerized opponent because it makes me feel really advanced. Um, obviously you can probably tell from my code that I am not really advanced, but hey, works for me. Okay, so um, just so I don't forget what I'm passing back, I always uh, kind of write the last line as well. So uh, we are going to pass in ball Y and let's go ahead and just in here, let's make a computer speed equal to We'll give them three. They can't be as fast as the player. As the player, you should always behave like you are the code's god, I guess. Okay, so computer speed of three, and then what do we wanna do? We wanna check if the computer's Y coordinate, now you gotta think, um, it's 30 pixels wide, right? And really the way a computer would play this is to get into the optimal placement. So it doesn't just want the ball somewhere over the paddle. It wants it dead in the center. So there's room for error. So let's say if the computer, um, plus 15, which again, think about the coordinate system going from zero at the top to 300 at the bottom. So plus 15 is going to be in the middle of the paddle. And if that is greater, then the ball's Y position, and we'll say plus five, because again, the ball is 10 wide. So what do we want to do if the computer midsection is farther down the screen than the ball's midsection is we want to computer Y minus equal computer speed, right? Okay, and then we will say else computer let's do l if um, so l if computer y plus 15 is less than ball underscore y plus 5 and in that case that's saying that the we need to go down the screen so then we want computer y plus equal to computer speed alrighty and I actually think that's gonna handle it, um, but what you'll see is this isn't really gonna do much yet because the ball isn't moving. So I'm just gonna set the ball Y equal to zero. When I start this up, we should see the computer move to get to it, bam. And then it freaks out because it, it's just bouncing around, but cool. So um, it appears that that works, oops. It appears that that's working pretty good, but once we get the ball moving and bouncing, um, it should work a lot better. So let's go ahead and, um, oops, let's go ahead and move on to um, the ball. So I will create a function that I'm gonna call update ball. Oop. Update ball. I'm not completely sure yet what all it's gonna need passed in and what all um, it can do without. So let's just start writing it and we'll kind of flesh it out as we go. So update ball. And 
inside this function, it's going to basically take a look at, uh, let's, let's separate into X movement and Y movement and say, uh, if ball X direction. So we'll need to create a variable saying whether the X uh, is right or left. So um, if it's equal to one, that means that we're telling it to go right. And the X coordinate is less than, what do we want? Less than 290, I suppose. Let's see, we're gonna start by drawing it to bounce off all the walls and then we'll handle the collision with the paddle second. So if ball X direction is equal to one and the ball X coordinate is less than 290, then we are going to say ball X plus equal to, and let's do another variable called ball speed. So what I'm seeing here already is we're gonna need to pass in ball X direction, ball Y direction, ball x coordinate and ball y coordinate and then ball speed as well so obviously we haven't made a lot of those variables yet we're going to create the function for um, updating it and moving it and then we'll go ahead and kind of work backwards to create the variables um, that's how i want to do it there's obviously other ways to do it so code it however you want um, but let's just go ahead and say if the direction is one and the ball is less than 290 and then let's say if direction is negative one and x is greater than zero then the ball is going to move to the left by the speed um okay so now we've got back and forth handled let's take care of up and down and say if ball y direction actually we also need to handle what happens when it hits those extremes so my mistake let's do a l if ball x direction is equal to one so we're telling it it should go right but now ball x is greater than or equal to that 290 marker that means it's hit the right wall so what we need to do is change ball x direction okay so we're going to go ahead and multiply it by negative one and that's why i like using one and negative one rather than zero and one um, you can actually update uh, direction just by multiplying times uh, minus one which is really handy like when you want it to collide with a paddle you say well whatever direction you were moving move in the opposite now so that is pretty cool and then for moving to the left, we're going to, oop, you need an and. For moving to the left, we're going to add, if ball x direction is equal to negative one, and then it's gone all the way to the left, we'll flip it just the same, okay? So now we need to sort of do the same thing um, for ball y, uh, well, pretty much exactly the same thing for ball y. So I am gonna go ahead and copy this guy completely and we're gonna change some X's to Y's. And then uh, I think we should handle the ball's speed in the Y direction different than the speed in the X direction. It's just my sense of things. You can make them one variable if you want. Uh, I think it'd be a little more fun to have X and Y um, update at slightly different times so you get kind of slightly different um, paths of travel. Okay. So hopefully what we've done is we've just created a ball that bounces around in the uh, extremities in the uh, off of all the walls. And what we want to do is just return ball x and ball y for now i think we'll see we might need to return more but this should get the ball moving <laughs> get the ball rolling <laughs> i know that was bad okay so we need to go create four variables um ball x uh ball x direction 
and we'll start it out moving to the right ball y direction we'll start it out moving down and ball speed we'll make it two and ball y speed which I'm, we'll make that uh we'll make that two as well for now ball y speed but do we pass that in yep okay Alrighty, well, I'm just gonna run it and kinda let the code tell me what I did wrong. So it looks like we get into the bottom right and it tries to bounce back to the left once, but then immediately tries to go back to the right. So let's take a look here at our ball control. If it's going to the right and it's less than 290, just add it on. But then if it's going to the right and it's greater than or equal to 290 multiply times negative one. Um, if it's negative one, ball x minus equal ball speed. Um, I don't know why it would be this, but I'm gonna just try. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Stupid mistake. No surprise there. But we aren't actually able to update ball X direction and ball Y direction um, unless those exist outside of this function. So right, this every time this gets called, it pulls these variables in independently and uh, we weren't returning them. So what we need to do is not just bring back ball X and ball Y, but also ball X direction and ball Y direction. And now it should bounce around all happy like. All right, sweet. We could try to follow it. Uh, it's bouncing straight into the corners, which is rad. So there you can see why like I kind of like the idea of doing a different X and Y speed. It'll give you a little more interesting of a bounce pattern. But the other cool thing that you can see right now is the AI is tracking it and following it. So we haven't put in the code yet to handle like bouncing off of the paddle and bouncing off of your paddle. Um, but you can tell like your computerized opponent is going to be tracking it pretty good. So let's actually do that next.